Hi and welcome back. This is part 10 of the David Kurzel hit and miss engine build and in this uh, video we're going to be having a look at the cylinder liner and the piston. In the plans it says to make those out of cast iron but I've been on the forums and I've read a few you know sort of different people have done different things and what I've now finally settled on is a stainless steel cylinder liner and an aluminium piston with a Viton or Viton o-ring. Um, the reason for going that route is because it's going to be quicker and I really want to be getting on with this engine. Uh, in the plans it says to use obviously a cast iron piston and liner but also cast iron piston rings. Um, so that would mean making up you know like a mount to uh, make the rings and then heat treat and you know it's a bit more work. Um, so I spoke to a couple of people on the forums and um, who, who made their you know, uh, liners out of stainless steel and they said that there's nothing, you know, there's no problem with it at all, the engine runs fine. You know, that, um, some people have said that the O-ring might drag a bit um, as opposed to piston rings. But um, having spoke to those people, they said no, nah, there's, you know, there's no problem, the engine runs you know, as sweet as sort of thing. So that's the route I'm going to take. So I've got a, um, this is out of a hydraulic shaft, out of a um, hydraulic equipment, I don't know quite what it was. So that's just oversized to what I need, so I'll machine it down. I've cut it off obviously to length. Um, this portion here is going to be what I'm actually going to use, just enough obviously to the length of the cylinder block. And then um, it's got a lip on one end which remains at an inch and then the rest is uh, machined down to seven, uh, 950 thou uh, with a internal ID of 750 thou. So I think um, I've got to be a bit careful not to put too much. I don't know what type of um, stainless this is. Um, it may be 304, I'm not sure. But I don't want to be putting a lot of heat into this otherwise it's going to work hard. So we'll take it nice and easy, we'll drill it out to near enough the size and then we'll bore it and we'll see how the, you know, the consistency through. The lathe is set up pretty well so it should be okay just to bore this on the lathe without setting up um, any other, you know, like a line boring equipment or whatever. So anyway, we'll get on the lathe and we'll see how we get on and uh, see if we can achieve that. Well that's the OD finished and it's a nice good fit on there, hardly any play, in, well pretty much nothing in there at all. So anyway, so that's done, so what we'll do now is we will start to drill this out and then increase in sizes with the drill bits until we get up to um, just under size what we need and then we'll finish off with a boring bar. So we'll, ta <coughs> excuse me, we'll take this nice and easy, like I say we don't want to put too much heat into this otherwise that will work harden. Um, so we'll see how we get on anyway, so
take this out to, I'll bore this out to three quarter inch or just slightly under three quarter inch. And then I'm going to finish off with a hone because obviously even using the boring, you know, boring bar on, on a slow feed, it's still going to put like a series of lines in here. And if I left it like that, once you put the piston in with the silicon O-ring or um, Viton O-ring, it's going to wear the O-ring out quick because the cylinder isn't smooth. So we'll hone that after we've um, bored this out. <laughs> That was our last pass, so we'll just clear the oil and the chips out and then we'll have a measure of the ball and see how close it is to what we actually need. Eighteen point nine seven nine ah oh, nine eight not nine seven. 18.98 so that's 0 0.01 difference between this end and this end so um, that's really good so I'm happy with that that's less than a thou so from that distance there you know that's going to be ideal we'll just check it again though Eighteen nine eight. Eighteen nine nine, eighteen nine eight, eighteen nine eight. Yeah, so spot on. So that's what we need. So what we'll do now is um, I'll just set up the hone. Obviously, where we've been boring it with the boring bar, it would have put a like, you know, a, a line all the way down the ball. So we're just gonna um, just set up a you know a quick hone and tool, and we're just gonna run the hone in and out there, and we'll just. Um, take the tops of those ridges off and try and smooth out that bore as much as possible. So after posting on the YouTube uh, Machinist forum, I had a look and asked, you know, some questions about how or how is the best way to um, hone this cylinder out so this is what a guy come up with and he said it works very well so we've got a piece of um, sort of medium um, emery paper here and we're going to wrap that round like this and then put it into the ball and then obviously the rotational force of the sandpaper flying out will then take knock off the you know the sort of the high spots within the ball so and then we'll just move this in and out. So we'll give that a try and see how we get on. Actually, that's working pretty well. I can see that that's already that's already getting smooth in there. So that's the cylinder liner all complete, and as you can see in there, we've got a nice finish, nice smooth finish. So that should help with the longevity of the O-rings. Plus, uh, the engine's going to have an oil feed into the cylinder as well, so that's going to also help with the O-ring life. So anyway, we can now slip that into the block. So we've got a nice fit into the block, nice and tight fit. So yeah, happy with that. And it's now time to move on to the piston. So the piston, we're going to find that somewhere in this block of aluminium. I don't know what sort of aluminium it is, it's probably just normal extruded alley, um, nothing special. It does say um, people who I've sort of you know talked to they've used 6061 
which is a harder version of the aluminium. But I think the engine's so small, it's going to be well lubricated, it's not going to have a huge amount of running life. So, you know, this normal piece of aluminium should be fine. So anyway, let's see if we can find a piston in there somewhere. So I've got this roughed out to size, it's slightly oversized at this stage. So I'm going to bore out the middle first before I put the finish on. Um, so it says in the plans to use a end mill and then bore down to one inch. And I've marked on here with a piece of tape up to one inch. So we'll get on with that and then we've got to bore the piston out obviously larger in steps as it comes out here for the for enough room for the conrod to you know obviously move up and down when the pistons go in and out <laughs> finally received my O-rings for the piston rings. I'll just get a couple out. So this is what we're going to be using instead of traditional um, piston rings. So these are going to be thicker than the original piston rings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the first dimension from the start of the piston to the first line, um, which is 93 thou for the first O-ring. Then the second O-ring I'm going to sit in a bit deeper um, simply because the O-rings are thicker. So I just have to move those across a bit. So what we're going to do, I've spoken to the O-ring people and also had a search on the net of people who have actually used these in engines. And the depth and width of the cut is um, what I was mainly concerned with because obviously you want this not to create too much friction, but it can't be too loose. And, you know, because otherwise if it's too much friction, the engine just won't run properly. And if it's too loose, then obviously you'll lose compression. But also I wanted to make sure that these are okay and in the right position so I don't get too much wear, you know, and just destroy them within a couple of runs. So that was another reason for getting the dimensions. But the dimensions, what I've got, um, we've got a groove depth of 55 thou, which is about 1.4 millimetres, and a groove width of 95 thou, which is about 2.4 millimetres. So that's what we're going to go for. So we'll hop onto the lathe and we'll get those cut. So here's our tool, what we're going to be using for cutting the um, piston ring seats. Uh, this is just a ground up piece of high speed steel. Um, the cut is quite narrow, so I'm going to have to do a couple of plunges to get to the width what I need. But anyway, we'll get that set up and we'll start to cut the grooves for the rings.
I don't think I'm going to part the piston off here at the moment. I'm going to take all this out and uh, put it in the mill because I've got a machine down into the piston. So I've got to make enough room for the uh, con rod to be able to move up and down obviously as the uh, crankshaft turns around. So that means machining inside here. So if I part it off now, I'm going to have a problem holding that. I don't really want to mark this outside you know in any way because it's only aluminium so i'm going to take it all out set it up in the mill and machine it and i've also got a machine for the gudgeon pin as well um or you know for the where the um, connecting rod's going to go in there's going to be a pin go straight through here so i think that's going to be easier if i leave it set up like this and then once i've done that machine and i'll bring it back put it back into the lathe um dial it in and then obviously cut it off So we'll move that round to number one jaw and we'll just mark that so we know just roughly, you know, we can get a rough setup. So if we now undo number one and two and then we'll get it set up in the miller machine.
Well, that's the cylinder liner and the piston all done. And I've also done the gudgeon pin, which will hold the crankshaft in place. So I'm going to do a dry fit of everything now, just to make sure you know everything's going to work before I carry on with the next things. So I think what I'll do first, well, I'll just put the O-rings onto the piston. We'll just give them a little bit of oil just to make them slip on easier. Uh, next we'll put the uh, comrod in. So that's a nice tight fit. Wrong way up. Right, next um, we'll put the block cylinder block on. No, not like that though. Put the piston in first, I think. No, I'm going to need to deepen those seats for the O-rings. They're just a bit too thick. Oh no, no they're okay. No, they are. So I'm just going to have to um, re-machine those anyway, so we know what to do on that. Right now we can screw the block on. Right, so let's have a look and see how the engine turns over. Yeah, it is too tight on those O-rings. So I will have to um, just deepen the pockets for those. But apart from that, we're all good. So yeah, so everything's working nice. We have got nothing was hidden, so that's good.
yeah so I'm happy with that that's um, really good so yeah so now we can move on and um, we'll get those o-rings seated um, properly and then um, we can move on to the next stage I did have a look at the o-rings there was a tolerance on the seating for those it was 55 thou I've got it here um, yeah we've got the groove depth was 55 thou to 57 thou so I've done it at 55 so I'll take it out to 57 thou and see how that improves it if not I'll you know I'll just increase it a bit more but obviously I can't go too far but that's definitely too tight the engine isn't going to run a tick over slowly you know it's probably be alright once it's getting up to speed but just on tick over that's not going to you know there's too much drag there with those o-rings so anyway we'll, we'll disassemble it again and I'll machine those but I'll do them off camera well that's it for this video so if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching